Welcome to the Commonwealth Club and our community discussion tonight called State of Emergency, Violence Against Trans Women. I'm John Zippero, the club's vice president of media and editorial. I'm also honored to be the co-host of the Michelle Meow Show on Thursdays, which we do every Thursday noon right here. So I hope you can join us, including this Thursday when we have a great program on the Briggs Initiative. A lot of you, I can see, are too young to even know what that is, but in 1978, it was a groundbreaking proposition in the state. And uh, I think you're gonna enjoy that if you can show up for that. Uh, if this is your first time at the Commonwealth Club, what we do is we have question cards spread throughout the room. I will go around and collect them throughout the program. If you write some stuff down, just hold it up, I'll come and get it. And then at the end of the program, we're gonna ask as many of those questions as we can of our panelists. Um, I want to thank our partners for tonight's program, Queen Culture Initiative, excuse me. Also the San Francisco Human Rights Commission. And, and of course, the Michelle Miao Show. <laughs> and thanks to our sponsors, SF Pride. We're very much in, in appreciative of that. Thank you. Now I'm pleased to hand this off to my friend and colleague, Michelle Miao. Michelle? <laughs> I love it. How wonderful and so amazing that we can be in community together tonight for this very important discussion. We are in a complicated time of visibility and the rest of the world acknowledging the lives and experiences of transgender people around the world. Transgender people have been since the dawn of time, however, only within the last decade have transgender people been heard in the era of transgender visibility. We are in an age where people are more inclusive of transgender people in language, in policy, and culturally. In the year 2000, Laverne Cox first entered American Homes on a reality television series, I Wanna Work for Diddy showcasing the lived experience of a black transgender woman climbing the corporate ladder in New York City. In 2008, Isis King came out as transgender on America's Next Top Model, launching an international conversation on what it means and what it meant to be transgender in that time. In 2014, Emmy-nominated actress Laverne Cox was on the cover of Time Magazine regarding the transgender tipping point. In 2015, families across the country and the world witnessed President Obama in his State of the Union address include transgender people. In 2017, President Trump reinstated the transgender military ban, sparking national attention on the marginalization and discrimination of transgender people. Boo. I'm gonna add my own word, boo. In 2018, a White House memo was leaked regarding removing Title IX protections for transgender people at the federal interpretation of the law regarding sex and gender. In 2018, Ryan Murphy's pose was released, featuring the largest transgender cast on a major network television series. Yet today, one in four Americans know someone who is transgender. And yet, as of today, nearly 3,000 transgender people have been murdered worldwide within the last decade. The most common causes of death are gruesome. Shooting, stabbing, beating, and worse. At least 369 transgender people were killed in the last 12 months around the world. In the United States, at least 22 transgender women have been murdered in 2018 alone. We say at least because many incidents of murder of transgender women, people, actually are never recorded. Over 80% of these women were black or Latina. Nearly 70% of these women were under the age of 35. Over 50% of these women lived in the southern United States, with the overwhelming majority of these women having lived in the South, the Midwest, the mid-Atlantic areas of the USA. There is an international epidemic 
of hate-based violence towards transgender people and in the United States, in particular, an epidemic of hate-based violence towards black and brown transgender women. Tonight we have an important discussion, so thank you again for joining us. I'm Michelle Miao, the host of The Michelle Miao Show, your A through Z covering the LGBT, LMNOP, and everyone in between. We'll introduce you now to our panelists and our moderator, starting with our moderator, Honey Mahogany, who's the executive director of Compton's Transgender Cultural District. Our panelist, Diamond Styles, who's an influencer, blogger, and co-host of Martha's Plate Podcast from Houston, Texas. Hi. Hi. And last but not least, we have Ms. Tony Michelle Williams, who's the co-director of Solutions Not Punishment Collaborative. John and I will be back uh, with questions later on, so make sure you fill out your cards if you have questions for later in the con or in, in the program. But for now, we do have a special performance for you before we begin the program. Let's welcome Miss Taja J, who's an EDM, pop, R&B soul singer, and I bet by the end of this night she'll be singing everything. Miss Taja J. <laughs> yeah. Uh. <laughs> So I'm going to start off with it and a little back, back in church. Aria wanted me to sing this song. Come on. How y'all doing tonight? Good. Mm. So I'm going to sing Precious Lord for you. Mm. Y'all ready for it? Yes. Yeah, all right. Precious Lord, take. Lord, 
baby. Thank you. You sound beautiful. That was so gorgeous. Thank you. Yes. Well, Ooh. how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Uh, <laughs> after all that? Yeah. Come on now. I feel awoke, awoken. Um, we are here to talk about, I think, a topic that is long overdue. Mm. It's long overdue that we had this conversation here at the Commonwealth Club in San Francisco as a community. Why are black and brown trans women being murdered? Mm. It's a heavy topic. Um, and to open up this conversation, I actually wanted to take a quote from Laverne Cox. She says, I did an interview once where I said that the men who date trans women are more oppressed than trans people are. And the community lost their minds. As they should have. Okay. <laughs> she says, the truth is I misspoke when I said that. I was trying to have empathy for the men who are attracted to trans women, but the reality is that they are not as oppressed as we are. I've dated them and had sex with them in New York, all the Wall Street dudes, the hedge fund dudes. We think of those people as very privileged and having a lot of power, and in some ways they do, but in other ways they don't. The second you don't toe the line of patriarchy, you're excommunicated from it. At the same time, by having sex with trans women secretly, so many men fail to relinquish any of that power or be critical of those systems that oppress trans people. Mm. It would be nice, it would be nice, if some of the men who sleep with trans women would actually speak out about the oppression of trans women. There is a self-loathing there. There's also this whole space of oppressing someone that you've had sex with. Slave owners had sex with slaves. That does not mean they were down for the liberation of slaves or even had the capacity to love them. Hey. Ladies, what do you think? I think that's beautiful. I think those was beautiful words. And one of the things that I, I think is amazing that you start off with that because it's t it gives you a full scale of how you can say something in one moment and then you grow and learn based on, you know, people holding you accountable and you come back with an amazing new question to ask mm -hmm. after your mistake. And I think we all can mm -hmm. learn from that. So because we all are going through this process, everybody's not going to have the right answers. Mm -hmm. Everybody, um, we, are, we are at the precipice of change. And so the, we are those change makers. So we're not going to always have the right things to say, mm -hmm. but as long as we have our community to hold us accountable and we make those changes, mm -hmm. that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, what stuck with me was actually the last sentence, mm. which was, um, read it again for me, baby. Yes. <laughs> Capacity to love, there's, but I want the whole thing. There's also this whole space of oppressing someone that you've had sex with. Mm -hmm. Slave owners had sex with slaves. Mm -hmm. That does not mean they were down for the liberation of slaves mm -hmm. or even had the capacity to love them. Mm -hmm. Yes, the capacity mm -hmm. to love them. Um, I think that when we talk about our relationships and our relationship to each other, um, just as humans, right? We deal with so much that we even forget to love ourselves sometimes, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about the, the capacity to love, mm -hmm. that takes practice. And so when we talk about like the, um, the murders of black trans women, mm -hmm. and we're talking about the violence that we're facing, mm -hmm. um, that's what we're up against. We're up against an unlearning of how we've been loving ourselves and loving each other and it hasn't been feeling good. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it is, again, it's creating and generating more capacity to hold love for each other, um, to hold space for each other. Um, I think that's, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. capacity to love. I think what's interesting for me about this quote is that, you know, Laverne almost seems to make uh, in her previous statement, make an excuse for men. Right. Mm -hmm. Like she's saying, like, well, yes, you know, they have issues, but they're also oppressed and that's why they behave this way. Do you think that that oppression is one of the reasons why trans women are being murdered today? Hmm. It's a 
to my girls out there, which I think. I <laughs> absolutely. I, but I don't think that's just trans women. Mm. I think that absolutely. I think that black women, especially black cis women, um, <laughs> any our babies, days, our babies, mm. like the people. I, I, it's just I, it's not just us like patriarchy is kind of a widespread thing mm -hmm. um, racism is a widespread thing mm -hmm. so it's not just us right. yes um, we're um, the difference I think it is is the difference is that society says it's okay to kill us because mm -hmm. they part. don't see us as human mm -hmm. that part you see what I'm saying so whereas somebody else on an, in another demographic um, might have a little bit more humanity than us mm -hmm. um, they we we are crazy and mental um, um, we're just prostitutes mm -hmm. um, we're not the Cream of the cream of the crop of society, so we really don't matter. So we don't have to do studies about why we're getting killed. We don't. We they don't have to do studies about. Um, they don't even have to put us on the damn census. That's right. <laughs> you know because they don't they don't care about us. So um, I think that I think that's one of the difference one of the difference between other demographics. But yes, that that's a major part of why we're being murdered. And then do you think that that in turn makes us more likely to create excuses for our men because we feel like they are. Well, you know, I was, um, when you were talking, I was thinking about, um, number one, I was thinking about love and I was thinking about conditions, right? Like, you know, we love people with conditions even though we all desire to be like love without them, right? Mm -hmm. There are some things that we gotta do so that we feel safe, again, like in relationship to each other. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I think that black women in particular struggle with, um, not even struggle with, one thing that we haven't practiced um, is truly holding men accountable. Mm -hmm. um, and we were talking about this earlier today, um, but it is how our parents, right, were in relationship to men and what, and what they modeled for us, right? Mm -hmm. Our aunties and our grandmas and when the, gr when the uncles misgender us and the grandmas don't say nothing mm -hmm. or, you know, it is, it is those acts of violence, mm -hmm. like those pieces of things that um, perpetuate the more, right? It mm -hmm. perpetuates the babies um, thinking and seeing that that's okay um, to, uh, yeah, to enact that kind of violence. Um, yeah. And then add, and to the add to the uncles and the people and stuff like that, we got a, we, one of the things that has been a constant in my life when I'm, when I'm with people, people love to tell me their secrets. Mm. Because I'm a trans person, they feel like, oh, you can't judge me. You're trans. So I'm going to tell you all my tea. <laughs> <laughs> they just feel all the tea. So usually I'm the one in the family that holds all the secrets. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So at the same time that this dude is mis my uncle is misgendering me, I know that you molested my auntie when she was five. I know mm. that, you know, you used to be, before y'all got all churchified, you used to beat her. <laughs> or before you got your condition where she had to heal you through because you know that, mm. uh, people think that you know women are the rehabilitation centers of men I can't stress enough the importance to love your children mm. unconditionally because we were talking about our parents yes. and even though they had a journey of transitioning with us yes. because they lose their um, they lose their dream too they lose. They lose their dream of what their son could be, what their daughter could be. All, oh, so many things that they have dreamed of us before yeah. we even are born. But when we come out as trans and um, share our experience with them and share our journey with them, mm -hmm. they're going through a process too. And and I just want to say thank you to my mother. Okay. <laughs> because yeah. without that process, even through her struggles, um, it allowed me to have more capacity to love myself yeah. because I got it from her and I right. got, um, even in our struggles, even in, in the misgendering, all the negative that comes along with being trans, she still showed me, well, regardless, you are my child and I might struggle through this, but mm. I love you. And I'm going to do my best to try it. So, yeah, in 90, I'm old. So, in 95, when you transition, I was heing you down. He, he, him, 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 him. But now, in 2018, it's nothing but Diamond and she and her and mm. all the things that I need from her because yeah. she had the capacity to love me. Yeah. And I think, um, 
I think that's really important to point out. Yeah, what well, we were talking about this, we were eating lunch together today, mm-hmm. just to give a little context, you know, we wanted to see San Francisco before we got <laughs> on the stage, like, yes, yes. <laughs> where'd you eat, where'd you go to lunch, where'd you go to lunch? Brazil? Brazil, Brazil. Okay. We went to the mall, it was next to Nordstrom. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> and it was really cute. Um, but no, we were, talk- we were talking about our moms. And I think like where you were getting to is oh, a few things, girl. You said so many good things. One thing is understanding the art of transformation, mm. right? So we are, everybody transitions, girl, mm-hmm. right? Everybody transforms and have something that they desire to transform inside of them. Whether if it's a piece and he want more muscles, okay? Mm-hmm. Whether it's <laughs> it means that he want more muscles. Uh, whether it's uh, a woman who just had a baby and desires to have a flatter stomach, right? Mm-hmm. We all transition something physical in our bodies. Mm-hmm. We also all experience transitions of our spirits. Mm-hmm. We grow up, mm-hmm. right? We grow up quickly for some of us, especially my girls, queer folks of color. We have to learn how to love ourselves because ain't nobody else telling us that. Ain't nobody else seeing us in the ways that we desire and deserve to be seen, Mm -hmm. right? So we we have to learn those things. Mm -hmm. And, um, And that just actually just puts us a little further along the scale than other people sometimes as they are going through the world and matriculating and learning how to love themselves, learning how to uh, love other people and figuring out their relationship with people. So I think that once we really start talking about um, transformation in a different way, our relationship to the word, our relationship to the people who embody transformation, right, Mm -hmm. us, right, that, um, that they will have a better understanding. The third thing, maybe I was on number two, but the third <laughs> thing, <laughs> but the third thing um, again, is our, um, uh, how we transform, and how, um, yes, acknowledging that, again, everybody, yes, how everybody, yes, our mamas, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. here I am, <laughs> bam. When you said um, about mamas um, having to transition as well Mm -hmm. and families having to transition as well. You know, sometimes people call me problematic, but I feel like, you know, we're all responsible for this, right? We're all, we are all responsible for each other. Everybody say it with me. We're all All responsible responsible for for each each other. other. And I just really believe that um, a little tidbit to us folks, um, girls like me and folks like me, um, what I just want to say is that um, in this experience, we learn uh, because we waiting for so long for people to see us and hear us again in the ways that we desire, you know, we lose patience. And what transforms the energy and the space of what, whatever that situation is in my personal experience with my family is actually just being a little bit patient with them, and we already are, right? But there's an intention and a commitment and a mm-hmm. practice when it shifts and when it is different. Absolutely. My baby Luna's shaking her head. She's like, yes, come through. Well, what um, about this belief that transgender people, going back to the idea of like why trans women are murdered, right? Yeah. What about this belief that these murders are happening in response to a deception, right? I mean, that's the thing that is constantly put out in the media through these court cases and pleading like I didn't know. Um, What are your thoughts around that? Is there any truth to that? Is it mostly just stories? It's propaganda. It's a lie. Like most of us are not out here tricking. Is it some? Maybe. Maybe. But most of the dudes, if you pay attention to the cases, they know. They know. They already know. Mm -hmm. Um, It's not a... It's not all... It's just not, it's just, they are fine. They're enjoying us, however they enjoy us. And then usually it's somebody outside of the enjoyment finds out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or um, they're trying to, 
whatever status quo, like we just had a recent thing came out where, uh, not that this person is trans, but where a... Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know what you're talking about, yes. Where um, <laughs> a popular <laughs> basketball player was exposed. And allegedly. Blah, 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 allegedly. And, um, and now because his status quo is in jeopardy, his status and his masculinity and da 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 da. Now we have to threaten. They're trying to keep this status. And so I have to destroy you because if I destroy you, you can't tell the truth and I can lie about it. Mm -hmm. Um, You can't tell people that we've been texting all this time because usually, like the girl in Dallas, I don't know, a couple of years ago, their text messages, he tried to lie and say he didn't know, but when the investigators found out, you've been knowing for months Mm -hmm. and y'all been hooking up. You've mm-hmm. been knowing what the T was. And that's usually the case. I usually know. It's a lie to think that we're just out here tricking people because mm-hmm. it's just not the truth. Yeah, well, I mean, just go along those lines, um, there was a man named James Dixon who murdered Elon Nettles in Harlem mm. in 2014. And he stated in his trial that he did so because when he flirted with her, his friends made fun of him and he was embarrassed. Right. Coward. You're a coward. That's, a, that's holding them accountable, standing in manhood mm-hmm. by saying, this is what I like. I'm going to stand right here. <laughs> right. The, isn't that what, we, the, what patriarchy says a man does, stand in what he likes and stand in what he does and mean what he says? He don't have to be clandestine hiding in the back, doing stuff behind people closed doors. This is who I am. I'm the man. I like this. I like da 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 if you're doing that, then why are you hiding this? Right. I was just on Instagram today and I saw through my feed that Laverne Cox po- reposted a picture that her partner had posted, mm-hmm. who um, was a picture of the two of them and him saying, like, I am, you know, a cisgendered straight man. This is my partner. I love her. I think more, you know, cis straight men need to come forward and admit Absolutely. that they love trans women and are attracted to trans women. Do you think that, you know, and this is someone, of course, who, you know, is also in a relationship with Laverne Cox. So, is this newfound visibility, this moment mm-hmm. that we're having, is this changing any of this stigma or is it, do you think it's actually increasing it? No, I actually think it's increasing it. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. Honestly, honestly, shame the devil. It's, an, it's, a, it's a double-edged sword. Visibility and awareness does not fix my life. No. If, you're, if visibility and awareness doesn't come with some real life mechanism to help me survive. It doesn't give me anything. Mm -hmm. You have to give me real life things to fix stuff about housing. Like I don't care. One of the things I started my my podcast is Martha Marshall's Plate. One of the reasons why I wanted to start it is because when I in 2016 when they was going through elections, when they talked to trans folks, they were talking about a bathroom issue, Mm -hmm. and that's not saying that that's not important, but. I got housing issues. Mm -hmm. I got income inequality issues. Mm -hmm. I got healthcare issues. Mm -hmm. I got so many things that are more important that that my survival depends on Mm -hmm. than going to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Or this is what they do. You say you are an organization that helps trans folks, but you don't want to hire us. Tell me that. You don't want to hire us, but you want us to come do the work for free. (laughs) <laughs> right. You want us to create programs for you. Show up so you can get paid. <laughs> Show up and you can pay or right. hire our drag girls because we beat to do the benefit right. to raise you money. Yeah, right. But we, you ain't really paying us. You're you going to work for your tips and we, we take a little bit. Yeah, no, you, come on. Like these people, you gotta, we got to hold, while we talk about holding the men accountable, hold some of the people that's allies accountable too. That's right. Because they're a part of it too. And I wanted to kind of add, kind of pose your other question as well. When we talking about loving us, mm-hmm. do they really love us or are they just having sex with us? Right. Oh, wait a minute. It's yeah. not about love. It's about I'm objecting, I'm objectifying you like I do women. Exactly. <laughs> because I'm used to this, especially as a black trans woman, because we have the, the race you got a big BBC objectification and then mm. the, the, how they objectify the, women's, the black women's body. So we mm-hmm. got a, a bunch of stuff. So I don't think it's always rooted in love. Yeah. So rooted in lust. Um, I, I think that's another reason why they feel like they don't need to come forward like that and share it because, oh, I'm just, look, this is my, this, I'm just a freak. This ain't, I really, I'm going to end up marrying a woman. Mm-hmm. Right. And I'm not going to tell her nothing. <laughs> and I'm going to, this ain't really me. This is just me. I don't need to, be, I don't, and I don't feel like I'm a part of this community. Right. Yeah. I'm just doing it. 
This is yeah. just a phase I'm going through. Miss Tony, so I was something? thinking, yes, I'm like, I actually want to pose it back to you, right? The question <laughs> that you asked, the question, is it really love? And then you offer, possibly not. It could be lust. Um, and in a world that, like, I'm reimagining for all of us, it is love. Okay. Right? And, again, if we go back to the original quote, right, it is actually not having the capacity to love, mm -hmm. thus resulting in what's comfortable and what's easiest, right? Um, which we're taught, they're taught, um, people who commit violence against us, right? And it's black men, police, we'll mm -hmm. get there in a second. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it is their- um, Wait, 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 hold on. I wanna, I wanna clean that up a little bit. So wait. we can't just say black men because we know that crimes are created in, within communities. So yes, black men are usually killing black trans women, whereas white men are usually killing white trans women. So it's not just, it's not just, mm -hmm. it's, this is a community thing. We are getting murdered at different rates, mm -hmm. but it's interracial. Yes, and I don't necessarily know the, and um, yeah, I'm not sure of experiences of white folks and other folks of color. <laughs> um, I can only speak from my experiences and the experience that I have with my sisters and the experiences that I have with other folks of color and white folks who be with me and my sister, right? Whatever they share with us is what I know. Um, and what I know is, um, and this is not shaming men, this is again where we're here to really, again, name the issue and name the problem, then offer some solutions. For us as black trans women, we are being, I am worried and I am concerned. I'm concerned for the girls that are, are dying out here. I'm concerned for their families who don't no longer have time or space or opportunity to practice building their capacity to love. Mm -hmm. I am worried and concerned for my sisters who are still here have, who have to bury them and paint their nails, you know, and, and, and do their makeup when they're in the casket and fight their parents. And mm -hmm. I'm worried about us. Mm -hmm. And for us, we have to say, hey, black men, stop murdering us. But we also have to say, hey, black family, it's time for a culture shift. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Black family, family, all of us, right? It's time for a well, I'm talking to us. And so for us, it is black families. Mm -hmm. It is time for a culture shift. It is time for us to practice again how we are listening to each other and being present with each other. You know, how we are not just respecting and, and you know, we were talking about this earlier. Um, folks from all movements have a similar desire mm -hmm. to be respected, and to be left alone so they can be full up in their dignity, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and be free. Just use an example, my grandma, Betty Ruth, shout out, hope you watching, baby. Come on, Betty Come Ruth. through. Be Everybody say, Betty Ruth. <laughs> Betty Ruth. Betty Ruth. Hallelujah. Hey. She hates me calling her full name, but <laughs> you know, she just goes out there anyway. I do it anyways. Um, my family, for me, is a testament of transformation, right? It's what I'm sharing with y'all about the practices that I have. Um, um, when I moved back home from Virginia, number one, I, I really hated being there. It was not a safe place for me. Um, and three months after I left, Lamia Beard, who was the first trans woman who was reported murder in 2015 in Norfolk, Virginia, had um, been murdered and shot seven times while she was on the stroll. Um, again, this is Lamia Beer. She's best friends with one of my best friends. She's one of the girls. I sat in her hotel room, baby, gave her condoms, left early so she could have her date, came back. She played the flute for me. That is Lamia Beard. Everybody say Lamia Beard. Lamia Beard. Beard. Let's bring her into the space. And um, I came back home with the intention of two things. Number one, I was on the phone with one of my babies, shout out to my babies at home, and he told me that grandma had said, um, he called me, he said, grandma said I was going to hell. I said, why is, why is grandma telling you stuff like that? You know, um, we talked about it. In that moment, I was like, oh, I really need to get home. Me going home just every Christmas, 
is not enough to transform these children, baby, mm -hmm. to transform their hearts and minds. They don't know who I am and people are feeding them things that they don't need to be fed because they love me. So my first commitment was going home to be with my babies. My second commitment was also to be with my family because I love them. And again, and I know they love me because at the same time my grandma cussing me out and throwing plates at me and all of the things, all of us cussing everybody out, she's still saying I love you. She's still laughing with us. She's still holding and that's when we cry, right? And so she just may not have the capacity. So I had commitment again, be with my babies and to transform my relationships with my family. When I got there, baby, me and my mama was fighting just like we was fighting three months before I got there, right? Me and my my uncle was misgendering me. I mean, all of the things that I was afraid of to come back home and do, they were doing, I was living in it. I had to take a step back and say, I remember my intention. I know why I came home. And it don't feel good to me, but that's what I want. Mm. And I made the commitment to say, well, when my grandma, when Betty Ruth cussed me out, instead of me getting mad and shutting down and walking out, I'm going to laugh and make her matter. <laughs> <laughs> and my laughter, essentially, she's going to start laughing too. Mm. And I just had to try it. Four years later, it low-key works, right? <laughs> but you can't tell me, you cannot tell me that none of us desire to be with our families. Mm -hmm. Do y'all desire to be with your family a little bit more than sometimes we want to be mm -hmm. with your friends? Just a little bit. <laughs> sometimes. Then, just a little bit, but then we ask <laughs> why? Because they don't have the capacity to do what? Love us. Right, in the ways that we truly desire because they don't hear us like our friends do. They don't listen to us or see us in the ways that our friends do. And so we are safer with them and in community. But if family was community, yeah. it would be a different story and situation. Mm -hmm. So again, if we are teaching, because there are some friends in your family that when we all make the commitment and we truly understand, you know, pronouns, yes, thank you for the past five years, pronouns. You've gotten us through the door. Right. Okay? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, you've gotten us through the door, but pronouns are not enough when it's time for a culture shift. It is like an, it is hard, it's Iyala fix my life times mm -hmm. five with a little more love and compassion mm -hmm. and a little more patience and kindness and respect mm -hmm. come through. So again, people could be what in their full dick and all of the mm -hmm. things. It is those things that, um, or are those things that again shift our relationship to each other. Because if you think about, she just talked about her friend who was on the host row when she got murdered. Why was she on the host row? Thank you. Let's bring the, come on now. Because she can get a job, right? Yeah. Survive. Survive. Right. So, if you, we talk about family being community, if you yeah. are family, mm. we're not just talking about blood relatives. I know we kind of, we in that space, but it's, it's mm. families, like allies as well, um, families in the community, all family, our whole community. If you are not, like I said, doing things that get us off the whole straw and that give, that's giving us jobs, right. um, mm -hmm. giving us shelter, um, putting us in a situation where we can what they like to say, pull ourselves up by the bootstraps. If you put us in situations where we can do things mm -hmm. and not pushing us out of resources, yes. um, then we won't be on the whole straw for guys to murder us. Mm -hmm. um, we won't, and if you are giving us, if you are opening up your capacity to love and include us in that love, we won't be out here looking at men who have trauma themselves and bringing them into our home. Because mm -hmm. sometimes a lot of trans women are in relationship, unhealthy relationships because we're just looking for them that scrap of love that we're trying to feel that nobody else has given us. Mm -hmm. Like we, 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 you know, sometimes this guy, if I got an addiction and he got an addiction, that bringing us together, that ain't healthy. <laughs> but because we both out here with no family, no nothing, we find in love in each other, Mm -hmm. it, 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 sometimes that happens and we, we, we're with these men who have gone through trauma who are um, who are on who, who, who are traumatized themselves and sometimes that's just a mixture for death yeah. mm -hmm. that's just a mixture for us to hurt each other because I know I will wear you we, out <laughs> we can't leave here though mm -hmm. without calling out the police 
okay? Because as we talk about um, our relationship to patriarchy and capitalism mm -hmm. and, and white supremacy and the state, right? Mm -hmm. and we're talking about how we are dying. You just made the correlation or kind of told the cycle. Normally we're put out by our families or we leave because mm -hmm. we don't feel safe, which puts us on the street, which puts us at higher risk to be susceptible to um, uh, uh, different illnesses and things and to violence, right? Mm -hmm. Number one, it puts us in uh, jeopardy to be involved with the police. So as we're talking about who's murdering us, who's causing violence, yeah, you may not, um, there are many reports of black trans women, black gender nonconforming people uh, being killed by police officers, but again, it is the state and their lack of resources that they are providing for us that allow us to not have beds, like currently in Atlanta, for people living with HIV, right? Um, uh, in Atlanta, um, hopper providers, organizations uh, who service people living with HIV has not been, um, they have not received the, their, the federal grant to, um, for, to house people living with HIV. I'm coming mm -hmm. into the things, I'm sorry. It's a little shift from personal to state mm -hmm. things. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, um, and so it is um, the state who holds those resources away from us, right? And who don't take the time to, um, to really, again, hear and respect the experiences of black trans people or trans mm -hmm. people um, who keep those resources away from us. Absolutely. Um, and so it is the police who harass us um, when we're engaging in sex work, right? Mm -hmm. It is them saying, let me uh, suck my so, and I won't take you to jail. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It is, though, it, is, it is the police who are putting us at more violence, throwing us in the cage where we are more susceptible to mm -hmm. things like HIV mm -hmm. or to more harm or violence, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so again, as I even bring back up what I was just saying around how families are protecting each other. Again, it's us reimagining a world without cages and us reimagining a world without police where we no longer have to look to the state for protection, but we look to each other, right? These are the same uh, ways in which the Black Panthers moved, right? Um, and communities of color did for centuries, mm -hmm. right? And so, it is us who have to reimagine. It's us who have to make the demands. Mm -hmm. And we do that by uh, collaboration and collectiveness or collectivism. But we can't do that if we don't listen to each other. Absolutely. If we don't show up for each other mm -hmm. in the ways that we deserve to be. Absolutely. Say that again, baby. Be an example. Be modeling what transformation looks like for each other. If we're not doing that, then of course the state, of course Kemp, of course Kemp will win and beat Stacy. Of course. Mm. Of course, and yes, we can organize, we can mobilize, but again, what we're talking about is a culture shift. What can people who are not family members do? What can allies do? Because, you know, there is this, with this They are family, though. Like, allies are part of your family. Like, I don't, right. I don't need to be blood relative to you right. for you to right. understand that we are in community together. But specifically, right. what can they do? Because what's ha been happening recently is that you see these news articles that are posted mm -hmm. online, and people share them and say, like, oh, yes, you know, this is horrible, this is awful. But, like, what can they concretely do? Okay. Mm. Commit to a culture shift to protect each other. When your daughter says that someone molested her, you believe her. Yes. Mm. In that moment, you commit to a culture shift. When your baby says, mama, I don't like him, listen, listen to him because he loves you more than you love yourself because of what you've created and dreamed for in your womb. Come on, girl. Mm. So commit to a culture shift to hear each other better and differently, to be present with each other and our babies differently. That's what we can do. And we know that our girls are going to keep dying. Your girls are going to keep dying. But when we commit to something together, it will transform. If you're in a space of power and you can hire people. Come through. And you look around your Get team. The tangibles. Ask yourself, what could a trans woman do if she's in this space to help your company grow? We know how to hustle. Baby. What else we know how to do, y'all? 
hustle, we what else? To, we know how we know how to make successes. So listen, understand. Right. Be creative. <laughs> do all of the things because of the fire that we are under to survive. We got certain skills that can't nobody else give you. Mm -hmm. So bring us to the table and let us show you how we can make your companies grow. Yes. yes. Bring us to the table. Mm. Um, but and right. Not to, and remember I said, don't just bring us to the table to sit there and be pretty. Right. <laughs> but understand and listen to what we need. Because we, we come to the to table and you still got to take care of us. Y'all heard about the documentary about Marsha P. Johnson. Mm -hmm. and, yes. Um, and you know how the person who produced it allegedly stole one of the girl's research mm -hmm. to make that documentary. Mm -hmm. So think of like, let's, let's learn from that person's mistake. Yeah. If you know a trans woman is out here doing work, sow some seeds in her work. Yeah. Don't just mm -hmm. steal it. Right. right. Sow some seeds in their work. If they're, like I remember there was this, this um, article that was saying that Puff Daddy and Jay-Z was creating this app called the Black Wall Street and da 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 da. But there's a black woman who already has done that. And so if they, I don't know if that, how much of that is true, but to say that they had the resources to create it, give it to the black woman. She's already doing it. Let her start it. It's like you have to take the resources you have, and it doesn't have to be always money. It could be a place. It could be, oh, I got this house that I can, um, if, is, if there's a trans woman looking to start a support group, I can give her space for free. It's so many things that you can do. Yes. It's not just giving money. If you got the coins, we need it. But, but it's so That's many great. things that you can do. There's so many talents that you, um, that you have access to that you can bring to the table. There's, uh, it's just a ple I can't tell you all the steps. It's what resources you have mm -hmm. in your privilege. I can't tell you what it is because I, I can't assess your privilege. But whatever you have, I'm not privileged. <laughs> well, some ways I am. In some, in some ways I am. Um, if you, if you, just whatever you have, access what you got. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Take care of yourself. No, we don't want to take from you. Keep yourself grounded but any little extra you got where are you putting that how are you sowing those seeds to make somebody grow yeah even if it's not us i know some black women that need it so i know some gay folks that need it i know somebody that you might care about a little bit more than us that need it but be an ally and spread that privilege out what about, also, what about civic engagement though around mm, that as well come through number community. three um, because I feel like that's something we don't talk about a lot as a community. Mm -hmm. We're so busy just trying to survive and mm -hmm. trying to succeed that we often forget that there's this whole political monster that we have, we have a voice and we have power and we can use it that way. Absolutely. Yeah. What is your experience with that? For, know your blind spots. Know that what, do, what, who aren't you seeing? Who, who aren't at the table? Like, for example, I know because we, we wear the pretty dresses and because patriarchy says to put women on display, where is the trans men? Mm -hmm. They're here too. They're out here doing beautiful work. Mm -hmm. Courtney Ziegler, I think he's, in the, he's from the Bay Area, right? Mm -hmm. He's doing mm -hmm. beautiful yeah. work, creating mm -hmm. apps, using tech to innovate shit. We out here. Mm -hmm. It's not... It's so many people that should be brought to the table because they have things to offer. So make sure you, you're thinking about your blind spots and how are you fixing them? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. who are you not seeing? Who are you not speaking to? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I feel like I want to talk about men because I don't want to leave them out mm -hmm. because they have to understand that, like, mm. like y'all are upholding this patriarchy and not letting yourself be free. Like you, some of these reasons why you got to hold this toxic masculinity, you hold it up. You are the reason why you can't be free sexually. Like y'all are, are worrying about what other dude is doing. Be, worrying about, it, to me, I feel like they play a part. They have to hold themselves accountable for upholding this system that does not allow them to yeah. love who they want to love. Mm. Whether it be a man, whether it be um, a trans person, whether it be whatever. A big girl. Well, a big girl. Right. I've talked to a lot of plus size women that say, you know, y'all talk about dudes just trying to come over and mess with y'all late at night. I got a dude that does that to me too. Yeah. Mm. I remember I was in high school and I was messing with this boy and he wanted me not to tell people that we was messing around together. Yes. Just because I was a big girl. And I'm like, yeah, that's something where we, we can relate to. That's another thing to look at. Shared struggles. Uh, shared struggles. That's if, if we pay attention to what we have in, in common, mm -hmm. we can move some, 
make a culture shift. Mm -hmm. We can uh, move some stuff forward and say, don't worry about what we have in difference. And that's really with cis women and trans women because mm -hmm. statistically, we all out here getting killed by them. Mm -hmm. You feel right. what I'm saying? We all right. out here getting killed right. by them. Huh? It's intimate. It's intimate partner relationship that's a leading mm -hmm. cause of death. That's not a disease for black women and trans black trans mm -hmm. women. Right. Like it's they're they're not just killing us. So this is not an epidemic. I remember um, this particular year. Um, Queer women of color were coming up dead, like the first beginning of the year, like on yeah. December, like the 28th of 2017, like queer women of color were just popping up. A lot of them was dead. Yeah. And we didn't, and they were just thinking that they were just, oh, these just friends is just dying. And they weren't reporting them right. They don't report our deaths right either. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they report us as hymns and man body found and da 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 da. They're doing the same thing to black queer women. Can I share, um, in Atlanta, um, uh, the Solutions Not Punishment Collaborative, a.k.a. SNAP, call everybody say SNAP for Freedom. Mm. SNAP, SNAP for, for freedom. freedom. Yes, a brilliant organization <laughs> that I'm honored to be the director of um, in Atlanta. Um, over the past two years, we have supported, three years, we've supported over five families who experienced murder. Um, and two of those folks um, in particular this year, um, one person named Nino Fortson, um, who was murdered in South Atlanta um, back in May. And Nino was a black queer woman um, who identified as non-conforming. Um, and, you know, for some of us, you know, they were studs, some of us, they was, you know, you know, you know, all of the things. Um, but again, it's those stories that don't get told, right? And it's those murders of all of us um, that we overlook. Um, so just to put a story out there in the space, just giving love and honor to Nino. Everybody say Nino. Nino. Everybody say Shaniku. Shaniku. And everybody say TT. TT. All women in um, Atlanta who were murdered, who identified as queer or trans. Mm -hmm. And just thinking about all of our girls and folks in Chicago this year. Mm. Um, and just giving love and honor to the girls who had to bury them mm. um, and had to rally behind their deaths um, in Chicago and all over this world. Um, yeah, I just wanted to take a moment to do that. And I've been hearing like, t I, is T-Door just happened, right? Yes. And I've been hearing a lot about them not even let black trans women speak at Twitter. Not here, not in San Francisco. What type of shit is it that? Didn't happen, Auntie. Like you're not the people who are most affected. Mm. You're not letting them speak. Mm. Like why that. Why do we let them get away with it? Why? Why this is? Why is this not? Why is this not an outrage? Like it's. It's. This is. If you are an ally and you was at a T-Door thing mm -hmm. and you didn't say, where are the black trans women? But all allies aren't allies, honey. Amen. Y'all better talk to us. Mm -hmm. Come on. <laughs> it's like, we got to hold our, we gotta hold ourselves that's accountable. What is, what is, that's what I wanted. We got to hold ourselves accountable to that. We only have one minute left for our discussion. Mm -hmm. I wanted to Perfect. close it out with a quote, mm -hmm. but then we have some audience questions, right? Is that yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful. Okay. So this quote kind of relates to the last part that we just addressed and talked about. People are often ashamed. I'm sorry, let me say that this is also by activist Jamal Lewis, who is a filmmaker and writer. You know, I'm thank sorry. Thank you, baby. Fatima. Oh, thank okay. You. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Activist Fatima Lewis, also known as at Fat Femme on Instagram. Um, the quote goes like this. People are often ashamed that trans and gender non-conforming bodies produce pleasure for them. And they're also fearful that others might find out. This is similar to something the poet Claudia Rankine wrote about police violence. Mm -hmm. Because white men can't police their imagination, black people are dying. Mm. Similar, similarly, trans women and gender non-conforming people of color are dying because people, especially cisgender men and women, cannot police their imaginations. Mm. Someone in the audience asks, <laughs> uh, why are women of color typically incarcerated and how does it differ from overarching you know, mass incarceration? Does anyone know? 
Mm. Can you ask the question one more time? Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, sorry. Um, why are women, why, excuse me, why are trans women of color typically incarcerated, and how does that differ from, you know, overall mass incarceration that we're seeing? It's no different as racism. Come on. It's like, um, that's just the, the way of the world. You can Google. There's a whole documentary called 13th that Ava did that it, there's a history that goes back from slavery that leads up to here where they have tried to police and change things and um, um, create an atmosphere where we are being... Yeah. Why are we dying? Yeah. This is this is a part of a cult a culture that does not value black bodies. Mm -hmm. So this yeah. is what's gonna happen. They're gonna try to put us in cages, they're gonna kill us, they are going to exploit us. This is just what this is mm -hmm. what when you're in a system of white supremacy and racism, that's just this is what happens. This is but this is how it's intended to be. Yeah. <laughs> it's working, the system is working. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I of the numbers. Clearly, oh my God, our system is working. They should give themselves a hand. <laughs> and I think that um, I think that to say that um, trans people aren't saying that we experience um, more incarceration or that we experience more violence. We're simply just sharing our story of how violent it is for us, mm -hmm. right? And so I think that women across ex across identities and experience. Um, um, none, nobody should be in a cage, right? Mm -hmm, no mm -hmm. one should be in a cage, arrested, and that whole process. Um, and so um, it is about all of us um, reimagining. Um, yeah, it's about all of us reimagining, and it's about all of us. Um, oh, I lost my thought, but I just <laughs> wanted to say we're not saying that was the main piece. We're not saying that we experience more violence. We're just sharing what kind of violence that we experience. Mm -hmm. um, no one should be in a cage, mm -hmm. and women across experiences um, are are currently organizing um, because, like I said earlier, we all across movements are desiring the same things: dignity and respect. Mm -hmm. um, and so it is that you're not going to find that in a cage. Um, and we all know that as black folks, as people of color, organizations like Women on the Rise in Atlanta and Free Her um, across uh, the national campaign are doing the work um, to bring those experiences and stories um, of women across identities to light. I would just want to jump right in really quickly on the respectability part because I think respectability politics has a really large part to play, right? Absolutely. It is like not respected to be black. It's not respectable to be a woman right. and it is not respectable to be trans. So all of those things I think are multiple layers of oppression and Absolutely. also make it harder to get a job and force you into underground economies Absolutely. which make you more at risk for being in prison. So there's multiple multiple layers of all of this, but I think it really does go all back to respectability. And Patricia Hill Collins talks about that. Her, she calls it the dom the matrix of domination. So she people have already been doing work, especially <laughs> black <laughs> feminists. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> they already right. done the work. They got books out for you, so yeah. you can research that. <laughs> Thank you for that question. Thank you all so much for being here tonight. Thank you. Oh, oh, <laughs> Let's give another round of applause for our panelists, Ms. Tony Michelle Williams, who's with Solutions Not Punishment Collaborative out of Atlanta, Georgia. Diamond Styles influencer, co-host of the podcast Marsha's Plate, and our very own Honey Mahogany, mayor one day, and the executive director of Compton's Transgender Cultural District. Exactly. Thank you to our partners, Human Rights Commission, the Commonwealth Club, the Michelle Miao Show, yes. and of course to our sponsor, San Francisco Pride. And there's one person I'd like to bring up here tonight. She is so wonderful and she is so hardworking. Come on. Miss Arya Sir Saeed, who's with Green yeah. Culture Initiative. If y'all can show her some love, she. She did this. She did all this. I just want everyone to, to know that it was Aria, really. 
who picked up the phone and he said, we need to have this conversation. And everything that we had learned from our panelists tonight in terms of redistribution of power, giving back resources, giving the platform, all of it came into transformation. It really was because Aria picked up the phone and said, give me the power. So thank you, Aria. Yeah.